then you can see that Natasha and I have been joined by a heavy hitter and one of the biggest punches in the game, one of the most exciting prospects in all of world boxing, Jared Anderson. Uh, that intro, I think that's pretty accurate, don't you think? <laughs> yes, sir. The one and only, the real big baby. The real big baby. So you've just flown in, so you literally you've just landed. Where did you come from? Uh, Houston, Texas. How was the flight? It was actually good. It was my first um, international first class flight, so it was, it was good. Oh, nice, nice. There you go. I mean, first class, you got that in. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, welcome, first thing. I mean, one of the things, one of the reasons that you're here is to introduce yourself to the UK audience. So far, we've seen with our top rank deal, we've seen the fights coming through, we've seen the knockouts coming through. We're pretty excited to have you here. If I was just to sort of put it pretty simply, how much are you enjoying this ride so far, this professional journey? 12-0, 12, 12 knockouts, it's, it's not going badly. Uh, not at all. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, never thought I would be here, to be honest, uh, especially not in a different country in the UK. Um, knowing that you guys want to know about me and is, are excited to see me is crazy to me. So, like I said, I'm just happy to be on the journey. That's quite funny, though, because straight away, I think we have this predetermined opinion of you because we see the ring walk attire, we see the, the Jared Anderson between the ropes, but we don't actually know a lot about Jared Anderson, the person. You're not that active on social media in terms of being outspoken. You're not braggadocious in interviews and calling everybody out. Is that just the Jared Anderson that we see on the screen? He's not necessarily the Jared Anderson off screen. You're quite a private person. Yeah, I really like that. I'm really a private person. I don't let the world really know what I be having going on. I try and stay in the real world or stay off of social media. I feel like um, people get addicted to it. You know, they, they get addicted to their phone and have it in their hand. I try and stay in the real world. I think first impressions, Tasha, when you walk through the door, I was like, Big Baby's not an ironic nickname. He's, he's a big guy coming through that door. You're sitting next to him. I mean, you're quite a, you know, you're a quite presence. A, a, yeah. A presence. <laughs> yeah. A presence. I was going to ask you, what have you seen of Jared so far? I mean, we've all heard the reputations, the, this, this knockout prospect that's coming through. Yeah, I've seen, I seen your last fight. Um, and it looks like you, obviously, just meeting you here now, you like to do your talking in the ring instead of outside of it. Would that be a fair comment? Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't really like to do any talking. Uh, I don't know if y'all seen it or not, but Jarrell Miller, I guess, made a uh, post about me or something. But I don't do the back and forth. All right, I see when I see. That's, I do my talking in the ring with my hands. What's your boxing background? So when do you remember the first time you walked into a gym and, and the journey from, from that point onward? Did you have much of a, an amateur career, even as a junior? Um, yeah, no. I, I would say my career, amateur career started to pick up around like 15, 15 to 19, um, right before I turned pro, of course. So that was when it started to pick up, really. But really, I didn't have that many fights because I was a big kid at a young age. When I walked in the gym, I was eight years old and probably 110, 115 pounds. Because I was always, I was going to say that. Have you always been big baby? Have you always been uh, a big kid, even for your age group? Yeah, I went the tallest, but I definitely um, was chubby and heavy set at a young age. Um, and then I continued to work out, and I actually started to get good at it. We, we associate America with so many sports, especially if you're, you're like bigger and more athletic. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose boxing? Um, boxing was your own man's sport. You could do it on your own. You didn't need a team. You didn't need other people because when you used to get in trouble um, in team sports, everybody paid. You know, everybody got to do these suicides and stuff like that. Um, not to say that we don't do it in boxing, but it definitely was a different um, mindset of it in boxing. You know, you got to stand on your own, too. You got to, uh, if you got hit in the face, it was on you. So that's why I chose boxing. Why did you turn pro when you did? Um, I turned pro when I did because USA Boxing, uh, we were having, we were kind of clashing heads uh, with the weight issues and me coming down from when I, where I, what I was coming down from. I was coming down from about like 230. Um, to make um, 91 kilograms, so they they weren't happy with it, uh, but I made it work. And when it stopped working for them, uh, the way they wanted it to, so you know, um, we just decided to leave. Did you feel like when you made that decision that you had a pro style anyway? Did you think I can make it in the pro game? I don't have to make too many adjustments, or did you feel actually coming through that it's, it's taking it's going to take time that transition? Um. Being young, I think I, I kind of had more felt like I could just come in and do what I wanted anyways. Uh, but it definitely, <laughs> I think after the first one or two fights, you know, seeing my performances and watching them gradually change and stuff like that, that was when I realized, like, nah, I got a lot of work that I can work on. <laughs>
is there anyone that you, you look up to or you, you like their style like he lighter heavier weight any anyone uh Shakur Stevenson for sure Keyshawn Davis um Duke Reagan so it's a lot of fighters everybody I came up on a you know U.S. team with and all those guys you know they really helped my career really mold me I mean those first two names I'll be staggered if they're not on a pound for pound list in the next five or six years. Shakur arguably is already quite high on that list, but mm -hmm. Keyshawn Davis, I mean, those two guys are the truth, are they not? Am, am, am I getting this badly wrong? Not uh, at all, not at I mean, all. Shakur Stevenson, I, I, we did his last couple of fights on Sky, got to go out to Vegas, and he seems to be on a completely different level to everybody else at the moment. Yeah, he definitely is. I think he is for sure. How did that sparring come about, you and him? I mean, that's wild. <laughs> that is yeah. wild. How much of that was from the, that, I know it was for the cameras, and it was good PR, but. Whose idea was that, and how did they sell that to you? That they don't, they don't have to be anybody's idea. We do that anyway, <laughs> just us, you know, just being in the gym. We kids in the gym. Um, does, he talk, does he talk smack to you? Yeah. So you're like, let's get in there then. Yeah, all the time. He'd he be the main one talking. He'd be the main one hitting me first, or he'd run up and hit me on my side, run up and hit me with a body shot. I'd be like, all right, come on, we finna spar then. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll happen anytime. Have you put a dent in him yet? Nah, I don't think so, but from, from the rumors, I think they want to say I have, but I, I don't think I did, though. Right, we can spread it on the podcast, don't worry about that. <laughs> so, without going into too much detail, the reason, uh, or one of the reasons that you arrived on so many people's radars was because Bob Arum, you know, was pushing you, and he was like, this, this guy's going to be the next big thing. But in terms of endorsements, John Fury and Tyson Fury don't give too many out, um, and that... And that that they said, you know, Jared Anderson is, is the next big thing in the heavyweight division. So my question to you is, you know, are they right? I 100% think they're right. Um, and I'm going to prove it. You know, I'm going to show everybody and I'm going to make sure that their coattail is uh, appreciated. Tasha, you won't be lost on you this morning. I think it started yesterday and last night, Tyson Fury on Twitter uh, and Instagram came out and he publicly offered Anthony Joshua a fight. Uh, in December. What did you make of that? Uh, what are the chances of that happening? If I gave you my last £10 or $10, were, is that fight happening or not? I just don't know how it can do with all the boxing politics. Like, fights are easily made between athletes because both athletes want to fight, like, you'll, like you know. You, all you want to do is fight, but you know, when it comes down to actually putting them contracts in place, you know, then there's you know, broadcaster issues, then there's promoted issues, then there's, you know, there's a little word. Issues. There's a little word you're missing there, money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, 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 there's lots of other issues that, co that it comes down to and how, how is the pace going to be split? And, and I just don't think, I just can't see there the, the being an agreement that, that, that suits everybody. And obviously Tyson believes that he is, um, you know, the A-side in, in this. Um, which, which he is yeah you know he, he has to be surely yeah, he, surely he has to be so he's going to want things that maybe was in the last contract that the half did get together but not signed and so he's going to want things in there that that wasn't there last time and and it's whether you know AJ is willing to accept that and AJ and the team is willing to accept that and we all know that Usyk you know Usyk said I won't be fighting any time before December so that's that's why you know it, it there's a vacant spot for him but I just can't see it happen. I just can't. I wish I, I was I was the one that was pro. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen last time, and they disappointed me, and it, it didn't happen. So hopefully, I'm wrong again. I agree with that. You think it can happen? I, I mean, I'm sure it can happen. Do you think it can happen in December next? Definitely not in December. Um, could it happen? Yeah. Do I see it happening? No. Definitely not by December, though. If it does. How long before? You have ambitions, you and your team, to gate crash that that world title scene. You know, twelve and zero now. Um, if I gave you a time scale, in the next twelve months. Next I would hope months. so. Um, being realistically, you know, we're looking uh, for those ten rounders so that we can actually get ranked and you know fight those fighters and make mandatory and stuff like that. Because I know nobody's gonna want to fight me. I'm gonna have to make people fight me. So we gotta, uh, you know, edge our way. But I, I believe if top rank can carry me fast enough, definitely could be in the next twelve months. How do you strike that balance between uh, experience under those bright lights? Mm -hmm. And getting rounds, so 12 knockouts, you know, it's not lost on us. Every single opponent you've faced, you've knocked out. And I suppose at your development stage of your career, yes, you want to knock people out. But is there that 
balancing out you want to get experience as well that you need to go some rounds to get to championship level so when you get there you've got that in the tank or is that not really in your mindset at the moment it's just pedal to the floor and let's just keep going it's always pedal to the floor um yes why because we don't leave it in the judges hands you know and so it's, it's just we want to win every round 100 percent. that's that's my mindset I, i'm trying to win every round of every fight um at every time every time every out every time i go out that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to win every round and so that that's why i fight like that um if it comes it comes you know i would love to get those rounds but if it doesn't happen we're not we're not gonna be mad do you know what i find hilarious that no. you're a pretty quiet guy you've just already said you know quite a private guy flip to your ring walks I mean you could not find a more extrovert sort of extravagant ring walks that's not the quiet guy that we've just been introduced to is that just no. the ring walks is a thing for you uh I think that and um sometimes I gotta put on a face you know and that's those are that's the time that I, I can put on a face you know I think I'm good at it especially being being as though I'm surrounded by my family it's not been a fight I had that I wasn't surrounded by family so is the real baby your alter ego do you think i wouldn't call it that um only because i can't switch to it like i i would want to but you could say that though definitely um when i'm in my mode i'm in my mode for sure like you you seen it with the pimp outfit all day when i'm in my mode i'm in my mode <laughs> yeah I, I gotta be able to get there and if i'm not there to if i'm not comfortable enough to get there by myself then it just won't happen that's interesting because I think I had a predetermined opinion of you from watching your ring walks and your fights, thinking that you were going to be this big sort of braggadocious guy that came bowling through the door. <laughs> we weren't going to be able to get a word in edgeways. But that's just interesting that you're not that guy, a very private guy. What what are your interests outside of boxing? Um, I like bowling. I like doing outside stuff, ATV riding, um, getting dirty and stuff like that. Just, you know, going outside, breathing in fresh air. Um, I just most recently went to um, L.A., First time I ever went to LA was, I think I was 2015, 2016, but I went and I was a kid. And I didn't experience anything. Then I just went back earlier this year and it just, just breathing the air out there was different, you know, and just experiencing different places. So traveling a lot, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'm into, just being outside and getting out. That's quite interesting that we're in a generation of people that are addicted to social media, addicted to consoles and computers and actually probably don't go outside Mm -hmm. as much as they should I mean you're talking to two parents here yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. not God bad bless the iPad <laughs> yeah I, my daughter is stapled to my phone and iPad I, I know exactly what you're talking about but that's quite interesting you know you're a very outdoors sort of person yeah definitely I I can't sit in front of um really any electronic for too long yeah. I always my mom always just I had ants in my pants as a kid cause I, can never, <laughs> I can never sit down so do you think that's why boxing suits you? Gives you gave you that sort of structure and something to do as a kid, or Definitely. is it not? That was the origin. That was the reason that it started for me. It was because I I had ants in my pants and I couldn't settle down, and so it was supposed to be structure and discipline. Were you knocking people out as an amateur, even when you're an amateur? Um, not really. I I think I probably had like five five or six stoppages that I can remember. Yeah, that's interesting. It's just I think like um, such a big guy, you know, when you yeah. started uh, boxing, I. Well, the gloves we were fighting in, the hand wraps we had, all that good stuff, and then me growing into my strength also. Like, I didn't take boxing serious until I was 13. When I got when I turned 15, that was when I actually started getting good and started winning a couple of national tournaments over in the U.S. Um, 16, because I had won the junior um, nationals 15, then went to Russia. I placed eighth in that, but even after that, uh, 17, that was when I really started to like work on my craft and like started to try and do pull-ups, dips and push-ups and stuff like that to build my strength. So I think that's where it came from. There is like a like a, a conception that heavyweights like develop a little bit later and you are a young, a really young heavyweight. Are you worried about like that kind of man strength? Like you said, you kind of got real into it a bit later. Are you worried about that? Nah, not at all. Cause as you can see, I they're going and I'm not trying. Like I, every well, I ain't gonna say every fight. As you can see in my uh, earlier fights, I was mauling. I was trying too hard. Now it's like I literally didn't try it in the last two fights. They just went down. And so I did feel I, like did I know what I'm thinking. Grumble. Like Lord help us if he hasn't developed his yeah, man strength yet. That's, that's what I'm sitting there thinking. Like because it, it is like a thing that they mature a bit later. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what we say about heavyweights is, is that they're developing, they get better as age goes on. But mm. obviously, 
big things to come if, if, if that's already happening and you, yeah. you, you're fighting physical men as well so what about coming over to the uk so it's not lost on us you know you're here to enjoy the fights at the weekend but there's a lot of heavyweights in the uk scene here would that be of interest to you that you can see that top rank link up that you would come over here and box yeah, definitely i would love to come back and fight over here you're actually supposed to be on the fury white undercard yeah I, I was actually very upset not to make that card yeah the opportunity will come again, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Have you seen many of the UK heavyweights? I mean, I'm not here to play matchmaker. Uh, do, do I give you names and you tell me what you think, or is that not yeah, a good idea? I mean, like someone like Dillian White, who, who lost to Fury, you know, that's a step you, you would think uh, in the I next would 12 love months. I him. Dubois. Yeah. Daniel Dubois. I would love to fight Dubois. I don't want to keep you too long because, you know, you've got things to do today. Um, sleep. Yes, yeah, sleep. <laughs> Jet lag. Welcome to our world when we come to the States. Just finally, there's two top of the bill fights here with Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall and Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer. Do you have predictions for either of those? How you think they would go? I'm not asking you to split loyalties or anything like that, but do you think who do you think wins the top of the bill? Shields, Marshall? Uh, I think Shields wins easily. Um, and between the Michaela and Alicia fight, we got to see who works harder, man. Um, and see, is I think it's gonna be more of a technical fight. Whoever stays to the key, I mean, stays to the, uh, their key points and the game plan is gonna win the fight.